If your Game Boy Pocket backlight looks like this, you know, a bit washed out and in need of an upgrade, you're going to want to stay tuned to see the latest Funny Playing IPS kit that makes your old Game Boy Pocket look absolutely amazing. Not only that, I'm going to show you how to properly install this kit, as well as the impact on battery life, and lastly, how you can save 5% when purchasing your very own Game Boy Pocket IPS kit from Retromodding. So sit back and relax, this is going to be a good one. Let's roll the intro. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. So it's been known for a while now that Funny Playing was working on a Game Boy Pocket IPS kit. I was actually able to get one of the first 100 units made, but my order got held up in US Customs for a while so I didn't get to release this video as early as I wanted to. But I have it now, so let's dive right in and take a look at all the components that it comes with. Okay, so this kit comes in a nice sort of mini Pelican case, which is great, so it should be very well protected. All right, so let's go ahead and let's open it up. All right, so right on top here, we have the IPS panel. Next item here is the glass screen lens, some foam with adhesive, and the ribbon cable. All right, so the first item I'm gonna go over here is the custom glass screen lens. Now, please note this actually doesn't have a small LED window. However, Funny Playing made an announcement that it is actually now being offered. Not sure how retro modding will be handling this, but I'm sure they'll be announcing it soon as well. Now, the image that the IPS kit actually provides is slightly larger than the original Game Boy Pocket screen, but it should still fit within the original screen lens. And if it doesn't, we have this glass screen lens that we can install just in case. All right, so that's a glass screen lens. All right, so next we have the foam gasket with adhesive. Now, as you all know, I'm actually not a big fan of these adhesives, and I'm actually really considering whether or not I'm gonna use this with the kit. And right now, I think I'm probably not even gonna use this at all. Now, by the time Retromodding offers this kit, it'll come with a 3D printed bracket. So you probably don't even actually have to use this because the 3D printed bracket will keep everything aligned. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the Retromodding kit, and I don't have a 3D printer bracket, but we're gonna make it work. I have a couple ideas of how I'm gonna make sure everything stays aligned. All right, so that's the foam gasket. Now the next thing we have here is the Funny Playing IPS panel. Now, first thing you're gonna notice that this is actually much smaller than all of the other Funny Playing kits. It's a little less uh, rectangular and a little bit more square in shape. And what I hope that means is we actually don't have to do as much trimming to the shell because it is actually quite a bit smaller. And again, this is just a thin IPS panel that has become so synonymous with funny playing. So really not too much to talk about here. All right, so that's the IPS panel. All right, so next we have the custom ribbon cable, and this is really at the heart of the entire kit. Again, this is another funny playing staple along with their IPS panels. Now, interestingly enough, this actually comes with a couple pieces of magnet wire which we will be using in order to power the screen. So this kit does require a little bit of soldering. And also the other wire is, is for the touch sensor, which we will be installing because it does enable some really cool functionality for this kit. Okay, so that's the contents of the kit. So in order to do this mod, you're gonna need the following items. Please feel free to pause the screen so you can take note of them. Also, after the tutorial, I'll conduct a battery test to see how long the Game Boy Pocket lasts with this new IPS kit. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with this mod. You'll notice that this Game Boy Pocket doesn't have an LCD. If you remember from my Game Boy Pocket refurb video, I left the screen out of this pocket with the intention of backlighting it. And now it's time and I couldn't be more excited. As always, let's disassemble the unit so we can work on trimming the front shell housing. We need to trim quite a bit of the shell to fit the LCD. I'm going to show you all the areas that need to be trimmed. My method of trimming involves using flush cutters to snip all the corners, then using a craft knife to score the plastic, and lastly, some needle nose pliers to fatigue the plastic until it's removed. 
I find that this method gets consistently decent results and a relatively flush finish. I use my flush cutters to do a bit of cleanup and a file to finish things up. Next I use a craft knife to slice away some of the plastic around the screw posts to make sure the IPS panel can sit in the correct position. You may need to test fit the screen a few times to get this right. I decided to remove this bit of plastic here since it really isn't needed and made trimming this area a little more difficult. The goal of all this trimming is to align the IPS panel with this corner near the power switch housing shown here. Okay, it's time to install the foam gasket. In order to not permanently affix the LCD to the gasket, I recommend only removing some of the release paper as to not fully expose the adhesive. I actually ended up removing half of the release paper, as you'll see, because I wasn't getting enough hold from the exposed adhesive. Now let's install the ribbon cable. I used a small piece of Kapton tape to hold it in place. Next, let's put all the buttons and membranes back in place along with the motherboard. Attach the ribbon cable to the motherboard and lock it in place by securing the locking tabs. Put a blob of solder on the touch sensor and then attach the included wire. Let's pre-tin the two pads on the ribbon cable. Now attach the other included wire onto the pad labeled POW for power. And then attach the other end of the wire to leg one of the power switch. It should look like this. Next solder the other end of the sensor wire to the pad labeled TCH for touch. Apply some double sided tape to the touch sensor and adhere it to the inside of the shell. And now let's button up the console. And there you have it. As always, Funny Playing has really outdone themselves. This kit integrates really well into the Game Boy Pocket. As an example, the contrast wheel has seamlessly been repurposed to control the screen brightness and feels extremely natural to use. Changing the color palette is just as simple. Tapping the top corner of the shell allows you to scroll through all 36 color palettes, while a longer tap allows you to progress backwards. All the colors seem to have a muted hue, which is different from other similar kits. 
Holding the sensor even longer unlocks arguably the defining feature of this mod. I'm going to call it Pixel Mode. This mode very much resembles the original Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket's dot matrix display with a visible space in between the pixels. Shout out to Retro Roxy who found this feature and shared it with us. I'll link his YouTube channel in the description below. Despite all these awesome features, there are just a few minor issues. I have noticed that there is some visible artifacting at various points during gameplay. For example, on the title screen of Link's Awakening, you can see right below the title there are some small artifacts. This is present in both pixel and non-pixel mode. Something else to note is glitching during screen transitions. During transitions, like when window scrolling or entering and exiting a dungeon, you will notice horizontal lines quickly flashing on the top portion of your screen. This issue only seems to be present in pixel mode and not in non-pixel mode. Now the last issue of course is battery life. The Game Boy Pocket was never known for their battery longevity, especially when modded, so the results of the battery tests that I will conduct shouldn't surprise you. The first battery test will be done at the lowest brightness setting, the second at full brightness setting, and lastly, just for fun, I'll set the brightness to its lowest setting and use a Crix flash card. Now all these tests will have the volume turned off and will be using an official copy of Zelda Link's Awakening, except of course for the last test which will play Link's Awakening from a flash card. And like my past battery tests, I'll be using brand new Duracell Optimum AAA batteries. Okay, let's start with the first test. All right, three hours and 38 minutes. That seems to be a pretty decent amount of time. According to the Funny Playing website, we should see roughly three hours of battery life at the default brightness setting. Okay, let's do the second test. At full brightness, it looks like we can expect to get roughly 1 hour and 36 minutes of gameplay. That's less than half of what we got at the lowest brightness setting. Certainly not a lot of time. Okay, the last test. So we got almost exactly two hours, about an hour and a half less than if using an official game cart. Also, I'm not sure if you noticed, but using the flash cart caused the screen to be even dimmer. I guess the power draw of the cart caused the screen to be less bright, which is a little strange. Here's a summary of the results. Now aside from battery life and a few other small quirks, this is a great backlighting option. Before this, we had to dissect our original screens and add a Biver chip to get decent results. This option from Funny Playing raises the bar in what we should expect from future backlight kits. So there you have it, what I consider to be the best backlight kit for the Game Boy Pocket. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, we'll see you next time.